Hey, I'm Nancy Cavey, a national ERISA and individual disability attorney. Welcome to Winning Isn't Easy. Before we get started, I've got to give you a legal disclaimer. The Florida Bar tells me that I have to tell you that this podcast is not legal advice. So now that I've said it, nothing will ever prevent me from giving you an easy to understand overview of the disability insurance world, the games that disability carriers play, and what you need to know to get the disability benefits you deserve. So off we go. Multiple sclerosis is a debilitating disorder that impacts the central nervous system. It can cause vision problems, balance problems, difficulty walking, loss of sensation, fatigue, cognitive issues. And we here at KV Law encounter this disorder so frequently in our claims that this is our fifth episode surrounding this disorder. Join us in uh, talking about applying for disability benefits if you're suffering from multiple sclerosis. And you might want to look at some of our earlier episodes so that you're literally on the same page with us. But today I'm going to talk about three things. What your disability carrier plan doesn't understand about the stages of MS and what MS can do to your body. Two, predicting long-term disability in MS with the use of MRI biomarkers and two implications of biomarkers in your ERISA disability claim. And then lastly, how AT&T tried to justify a disability claim denial of an MS patient's uh, subjective pain and complaints. Got it? Let's take a break before we get started on this insightful episode of MS and Disability Insurance Claims. Been robbed of your peace of mind by your disability insurance carrier? You owe it to yourself to get a copy of Robbed of Your Peace of Mind, which provides you with everything you need to know about the long-term disability claims process. Request your free copy of the book at kvlaw.com today. Welcome back to Winning Isn't Easy. What your disability carrier or plan doesn't understand about the stages of MS and what MS can do to your body. MS is an autoimmune disorder that progresses over time. Your immune system mistakenly attacks the healthy cells in your myelin. I like to think of myelin as the electrical coating on a wire around the nerves in your spinal cord in your brain. That's the image I've always had of myelin. One of the things I have found in my many years of practice is that disability insurance carriers and plans don't understand the stages of multiple sclerosis. So let's review those. There is the preclinical multiple sclerosis stage. Now, MS will begin to cause changes in your central nervous system. The earliest symptoms can include numbness, tingling, weakness, vision problems, cognitive issues, balance, and coordination issues. This is called the preclinical stage, and I will tell you that often it is not disabling. Once a person is diagnosed with MS, the disease will generally take one or two directions. The first is the relapsing uh, uh, remitting, RMRS, and it's characterized by acute um, attacks of symptoms that can come and go. Over time, the symptoms become worse and the period of time between the attacks shorten. Now, this can be difficult uh, for a disability carrier to understand because they will generally take the position that when you have um, uh, an episode where you are symptom free or your symptoms have stabilized that you can work. Uh, it's not until the uh, episodes become worse or closer in time or both that the disability carrier starts to take the um, RMRS seriously. And I find that it's very important. In fact, I think it's crucial that you're doing a, a fantastic job of documenting with your doctor the nature of these episodes, what happens during the episodes, what symptoms you have, what new symptoms you have, um, how long the gap is between these episodes, uh, and you're documenting the impact that these episodes are having on your functioning. Now, the other type of uh, MS is progressive MS, and that's pretty easy to understand. The symptoms are continuous and they get worse over time. But again, I think it's really important that you are documenting the extent and nature of your symptoms and the functionality. So let's talk about that. What is the effect of MS on your body? 
as the MS progresses, the pain, the numbness, the gait issues, the balance problems, the fatigue, the visual issues, the cognitive impairment, all of the common symptoms of MS can worsen. These increasing symptoms and the frequency of these symptoms can have an impact on your ability to perform your own or any occupation. And again, it's really, really crucial that you are documenting this in your medical records. You may want to keep uh, an MS log. Now, I'm not a big fan of daily logs. I think that can be depressing. But a weekly log, I think, is more helpful where you're kind of summarizing exactly what the symptoms are and then giving an example of how that symptom impacts your ability to function in your occupation, if you're still working, and certainly at home. I really think that it is crucial that your medical records be reviewed, uh, uh, preferably by an ERISA disability attorney, before you stop work and apply for benefits. Often I'll find that the medical records really don't tell the story that needs to be told. And disability carriers will say, look, they worked the day before, why did they stop working this day? Because we can't see why that might be the case in the medical records. So that the tale, if you will, of your MS symptoms, its progression and its impact on your functionality really needs to be told in your medical records. But there's another story that needs to be told. And that is, if you have comorbid medical situations like high blood pressure or diabetes or any other disease, there can be an interaction uh, between these diseases and your MS and it can kind of go both ways. The interaction can contribute to the MS, potentially the MS can worsen some of these other comorbid conditions. And so your medical records should speak not only to your MS, but to any comorbid medical conditions you have and uh, how those comorbid conditions impact your ability to function. But then we wanna talk about the combination. So we wanna talk about the MS, we wanna talk about the comorbid situations individually, and then we wanna talk collectively about your symptoms and functionality, making sure that your medical records, once again, are telling the story of your disability and why you can't perform your own or any occupation. Got it? Let's take a break. <music> 